G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, a couple of interesting stories uh, today that I found. So here's the first one. Authorities shut off electricity to Bitcoin miners in Yuan Providence. So they're one of the biggest providences uh, for Bitcoin mining. So interesting, uh, you know, that they've shut them down. But I mean, there's a little bit more to the story. So let's go through and have a bit of a read before we sort of jump to too many assumptions. All right, local media reports indicate electricity producers in Yuan, China's fourth largest providence by Bitcoin hash rate, have been ordered not to provide power to crypto mines. Local sources report that authorities from the city of Baoshan in the Chinese province of Yuan are escalating efforts to crack down on Bitcoin miners, ordering electricity producers to cease supplying power to the city's miners. On November 30th, Chinese crypto reporter Colin Wu tweeted that several miners had, in, uh, I'm guessing, had been informed of the ban, sharing what appeared to be scanned copies of official documents issued to power producers. So that's obviously the document there. If you can read Chinese, great. I can't, so I've got no idea what that says. However, Wu added that the ban was probably informed by localised economic interests and probably is not indicative of a desire to squash crypto mining on the part of Beijing. There is no need to overestimate the impact of this incident. The attitude of China local power companies towards crypto mining is often changing. It is more a demand for economic interests than political pressure. The ban appears to have coincided with a 24-hour drop in global hash rate of roughly 10% from 140 exahashes per second to 125, uh, I'm guessing that's exahashes as well, through uh, correlation is far from uh, causation. So by the sounds of it, it doesn't seem like it's guaranteed to be something political, but obviously they are one of the biggest uh, mining areas uh, in China, and China are the uh, biggest sort of area in the world for Bitcoin mining. So it is concerning and it'll be interesting to see what that will sort of do to the price because at the moment the price is just going up and I guess if less Bitcoin is being created and sold but the, the demand still stays the same then that could cause some issues but we're going to talk about that very shortly because that is concerning. Right, another interesting story I saw. So Ethereum flips Bitcoin node count. That would have to be the first time I would suspect that there's ever been a flip of the Bitcoin uh, node count. I would have imagined they would have had more than anything, but it seems Ethereum uh, is getting ready to be primed. Uh, and again, considering we've got more nodes in Ethereum than Bitcoin now, again, I can only imagine what that's going to do the price to the price of Ethereum and the fact that a whole stack of Ethereum are now going to be locked up and not seen for two years. Uh, we could be looking for big price explosion. All right, so a surge of validators, validators awaiting ETH2 staking has pushed Ethereum's node count to 11,259, surpassing Bitcoin by more than 100. So 100 is not too many, but still, again, I don't think there's ever been any more nodes than Bitcoin. But again, I could be wrong. I don't know that for a fact. I just I find that hard to believe that there would have been more, but not so hard now with Ethereum. ETH 2.0 Genesis stakers have pushed the total number of Ethereum nodes past the number of Bitcoin nodes for the second time this year. All right, there you go. So the second time, Ethereum has outdone them before. According to ethernodes.org, 11,259 Ethereum nodes are currently active, giving it a roughly 1% lead over Bitcoin's 11,136. Ethereum's node count last surpassed Bitcoin's in early September. All right, so... Interesting things happening with, happening with Ethereum, and obviously a lot of people are now getting on board. I mean, Bitcoin is, you know, it's the granddaddy, as they say, of, you know, cryptocurrencies. But this I found very interesting. According to the index node count, uh, sorry, according to the index, node count is the third major on-chain metric on which Ethereum has currently flipped Bitcoin, alongside transaction counts, which is good, but this one is not so good, and transaction fees. So Bitcoin fees are uh, a lot cheaper than uh, Ethereum's uh, fees You know when they go up. That's why they need layer two. But look, back in 2017, the talk was the flippening. That's what they called it. Was Ethereum going to flip Bitcoin and be the, you know, the biggest coin and the one that kind of leads the markets? Well, there are currently three uh, on-chain metrics that are showing this is possible to happen. 
Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's going to happen or that it's even going to happen anytime soon. But look, Ethereum is growing day by day. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, you know, Bitcoin will remain a great store of value, but it doesn't have all the other things that Ethereum's got. I'm very bullish on Ethereum. You know, we still need to be mindful that there could be bugs and all the rest of it, but it's been around for a while. It's kind of proven. We now just have to see if ETH 2.0 is proven. But, you know, people are happy with Bitcoin and it's sort of going on 11, 12 years old. I guess, you know, in another five to sort of, you know, six or seven years, that's how people will possibly feel about Ethereum. And it'll be interesting to see if Ethereum does flip Bitcoin before then and people just get super bullish. You know, Bitcoin is basically uh, the financial side uh, of the internet and Ethereum is, you know, the new web of the internet. The new Google is what a lot of people sort of say. So, you know, again, that's one of the reasons I'm bullish on Ethereum. But there is something that makes me worry a little bit. So over here, and look, it's just an article, you know, take it with a grain of salt, they don't know. But there's some things that, uh, again, we're going to have a look at. Bitcoin crash is coming, but bull run will survive, analysts say. And I agree. There's probably going to be a crash at some stage and a pretty decent one, but it won't stop the bull run. The bull run will recover. It just might take a little while. But, you know, in other cycles, we've had 30, 40% retracements, a number of them through a Bitcoin uh, bull cycle, and the cycle still lasted. We haven't even had one of them really uh, at the moment, although maybe you could say the COVID crash was one. That was a pretty heavy one. All right. In December 2017, Daddy Yankee's Despacito was worming its way uh, into every ear hole on the planet and Bitcoin hits its all-time high price, peaked at not quite 20,000 before crashing a month later. Now it's almost December 2020, a different global phenomenon has gripped the planet and here we are again. Bitcoin broke past its all-time high. I looked on the charts before and it did and it's pulled back a little bit. Uh, and we'll have a look at that shortly. So very interesting. We actually broke the all-time high, but it kind of just it didn't last long and it's pulled back. Hasn't heavily pulled back at the moment, so there's still a chance that we're going to push higher. So, all right, they're talking about a Bitcoin crash. Now, this story is what makes me think that uh, we might be close to one. And look, it could come tomorrow, today, you know, in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, who knows. But we'll have a look at this and I'll show you what makes me a little bit nervous. Number one, Chinese authorities, you know, cracking down on Bitcoin mining, that could have an effect. All of a sudden, uh, the miners dump their Bitcoin because they they can't mine anymore. They need money to stay solvent and stay open. So all the Bitcoin they got saved, all of a sudden they just dump. That could definitely bring the price down, particularly, you know, one of the biggest areas in China, which is the biggest area for Bitcoin mining. If they all suddenly had to sell, that could cause uh, a 30% of 40% correction, I'm quite sure. But let's have a look. Wealthy entities are taking the limelight at the Bitcoin market amid strengthening uh, strengthened price volatility seen at the flagship cryptos market. Data retrieved from advanced crypto tracker Bitcoin Block Bot revealed that someone moved 21,446 BTC uh, in a block only a few hours ago. Many cryptos, including Bitcoin, is rallying strongly and it seems that the momentum trade is strengthening as mass media outlets embrace crypto coverage. You are hearing a little bit about crypto in the normal sort of media, but not, you know, the TV and stuff like that. Just a couple of little articles here and there uh, you can read on mainstream sort of written media. But it's not until your local newspaper, uh, news, you know, uh, stations and that start to cover it. Not RCN, BNBC, they're, you know, all about money. You know, you're, you're regular, you know, Channel 9, Channel 8, 56, whatever it is. When they start talking about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, you know things are really about to heat up. It's only going to get massive after that. It's important taking note that recent price action in the flagship crypto market indicates that a significant number of buyers have been aggressively buying at the $19,000 price. Again, you know, we got a little bit worried over that weekend. We had the dip. People were worried it was going to get worse. And I have been saying I don't see any big retracements coming until about maybe twenty-five to 35000 Now look, it could happen early. Again, tomorrow, today, whenever, who knows, it could even come later. Maybe we don't see any big price retracements until 50000 No one really knows, but I just think the exuberance at the moment and people wanting to get in and buy 
it's too high. I just don't see any major dumps happening before then. But we need to beware. That's not financial advice. That's my personal opinion. I have cash on the side waiting in case something like that happens. But mainly most of my money is just in the market. There's that old saying, it's better to spend time in the market than to try, than to try and time the market. If you're just trying to wait for all the dips, you'll miss uh, you know, plenty of you know, really good kind of bull run uh, points and things like that. So there's no bad time to get into the market. There's just times that are better than some. Like, don't get me wrong, getting in at the peak of a bull market, that's not great. But in just about any market that's ever been out there, if you just hold long enough, you will be in profit at some stage. Again, unless you buy into something that you know is going to zero, and that doesn't happen all that often, but on occasions it does, and that's you know unfortunate. That's why you don't put everything into one thing. Right, but what I want to do is really focus on this. Look at this. This is Bitcoin and how it's moved. That is a pretty good run up right there. That is not bad at all. And so it was well over 19,500, depending on you know what market you're looking at. But now we can see up here, 19,400. So we have come back a little bit. So it is possible there's a crash. People are predicting it. Uh, authorities are cracking down on you know the miners. Uh, and Ethereum is flipping Bitcoin in certain factors, which means people might sell their Bitcoin to get into Ethereum. There's all these things we need to keep in mind. I personally don't think it's going to happen anytime soon but I definitely think in the future there absolutely 100% I can pretty much put my hand on my heart and say that there will be a 30-40% correction at some stage. Now I can't that's not financial advice and I can't say it really 100% 100% in my belief it'll happen 100% that it absolutely happens you know no one knows time will tell. All right what I want to go over here is I'll have to refresh this this has been here a while as I said, the gas price has gone up now 66%. I mean, nothing near the 200 and 300 that it was a while ago, but 66 is still, still pretty steep. We want gas fees in the single digits and really maybe mid to low single digits. All right, 587 billion. This is at least a little bit old, so we'll refresh and see what happens. 583, there we go. We've actually lost some. So in the last you know 20 minutes or whatever, Bitcoin has obviously retraced. So it's come down. It was at 19 something, I didn't even read that. And now it's down at 19.3. But still not too bad. Bitcoin uh, dominance, you know, 61%. So it hit that 65%. I thought it might go higher. It hasn't, and look, it might not. You know, people will get into Bitcoin. Uh, if they're, you know, Bitcoin maxis, they'll stay there. If they're not, they'll move into Ethereum. And then once they've moved into Ethereum, that kind of opens the floodgates. And then from there, they'll just start to invest in all sorts of things. That's generally the way it works. Unless they're, you know, some kind of maxi in whatever coin it may be, you know, and fair enough. But we can just see Litecoin up 10% in the last 24 hours. So it's starting to make a move. Found it's low, moving back up. Doesn't mean it can't fall lower, but maybe we've seen the move. Maybe that was it. Now let's have a look. What were the big gainers though? What's really done well? Okay, sushi has just gone from strength to strength. Uh, continues to go up. I, I personally, you know, have my thoughts about sushi and they had too many government issues early that just put me off. But look, that's not to say they haven't fixed those and can't turn out to be a good project. It's just not for me. BitTorrent, of all things, there we go. Had a bit of a move. Horizon, there we go. Litecoin, we spoke about it. Bitcoin Cash, Decentraland, nothing too major really, only a couple sort of double digits, really the sushi one is the good one. Uh, I suppose BitTorrent's okay and same with Horizon, but really 10% is just, you know, nothing too spectacular, but nothing to throw shade at. And then we're talking just single digit movers. But what about losses? Do we have any big losses? No. How good is that? It doesn't matter what you're in at the moment in the top 100, you're really only going to have lost you know, single and it's low single digit percentage in anything you're in. So, you know, that's pretty good. That is not bad at all. That's a good day that there were some gains to be made generally and the losses were very, very small. Uh, interesting to see Stella, you know, it had its sell off and it seems to have found, uh, you know, most of those uh, losses back. Not that they were huge losses. 
excuse me, but it did pump something like 140% in seven days. So I did sell some Stella to take some profit uh, and put it into USD because I thought the market might go lower. It's turned out it didn't work. So that was actually a bad move by me. I'm pretty sure I'd have to pay a little bit more to buy those Stella back. But look, that's the way it goes. That's why I generally don't sort of trade and swing trade. But, you know, it's not to say I never do it. I do do some swing trades, and I did a swing trade on Stella. So I made profit. Don't get me wrong. I didn't lose anything, but I would have been better to just simply leave it. But the Stella I bought is still going. So, again, nothing wrong. I haven't lost any money. Cardano down 1%. It had a fairly good run. So these are to be expected. Now, I want to go and have a look at some of the trades uh, that I did do and how they're sort of working at the moment. But let's go to Bitcoin. So here it is. We can see the all-time high was roughly around, you know, depending on which uh, exchange you're looking at, but 9,400 to 9,000, uh, sorry, 19,400 to 19,600 ish. Again, depending on which one you're looking at, and this is Bitstamp. So we broke it. Uh, got a bit of a rejection from it, and now it's just trying to find its way here. We'll have to wait and see. I do think it's going to go through, uh, and I was one day off. You cheeky bucky, you. I was one day off uh, being correct. I said I thought Bitcoin would break its old all-time high before uh, November was over. It waited till December the 1st to do it. So oh, what do you do? Sort of 24 hours off. It wasn't too far away. But I mean, I guess technically this did happen yesterday. So, you know, 50% right, 50% wrong. We'll, you know, let's call it sort of even. Uh, so, yeah, now we're just sort of waiting to see what's Bitcoin going to do. You know, it had its retracement. It quickly closed that gap again. And now we're just waiting to see what happens. Uh, yeah, interesting times. Let's wait and see. All right, again, there is a CME gap somewhere in around here. Uh, I think you'll find. Now, synthetics. As I did say, we got down to here and I got some synthetics. And I did say I thought we would, you know, possibly break out. But worst comes to worst, we might come and touch this line and bounce off well we found this line of kind of you know the trend line resistance or support whatever you really want to call it i suppose it's been more resistance it faked out pulled below and now it's trying to test it again so what we can do with this is we can move this and we'll move it out a little bit more now we've got to get it to these lines doesn't have to be exact but thereabouts all right so there we can see we faked out there's a fake out fell down below and kind of almost wicked off this support and now we're starting to test it so you know possibly we break out travel sideways and start to go up or maybe we simply roll over again and we do come down and test this but look the difference between uh, 25,617 to 17 satoshis and 19,988 satoshis it's about a dollar it's about one US dollar. So really, you know, if you're buying at this Satoshi level and it goes down to here, you've lost, you, you know, you're off by a dollar. That's not too much. So again, this is against the Bitcoin chart. It's not the dollar chart. So this isn't the difference in dollars. It's Satoshi. So yeah, I was happy to buy here. And if I was wrong, it falls down one dollar lower than what I thought it might and bounced off. So synthetics, you know, my buy at the moment still looking pretty good. Again, I bought it somewhere around about here. I'd have to go back and check. I just know it was here. Uh, and so we're about even at the moment. Uh, and again, in the dollar level, it's gone up a little bit. Just in the Bitcoin level, uh, it's around about even. So I've made dollars from it. I just haven't really made too many gains uh, against Bitcoin because Bitcoin's having a bit of a rally at the moment. Link. This one is looking super juicy. As I said, this is the long-term trend. It's been following this for ages. And every time it hits this green line, it basically has a parabolic move. Hits the green line, it didn't go parabolic here, rallied a bit, and then it had its parabolic move. But came back, uh, had a parabolic move. Sort of rallied alongside it, parabolic move. And look where we're coming. We're getting in this, you know, coil here it's getting ever so tight and it's about to touch this kind of you know support line and even getting close to this green trend line look this could roll over it's definitely a possibility but what has the trend been and the trend is your friend i think the trend and you know this is more rounded here but the trend says this will most likely bounce and have a parabolic run so i've you know bought 
some chain link here, not a whole lot. I've you know I've got my uh, you know early position that's holding, and I'm well in profit in that. But this is more a bit of a trade. I get some chain link here, and it really pumps, and again does something like this. My plan is I will take uh, some of those profits, put them into Bitcoin, uh, and wait for it to come back down uh, to meet this line again and then do the same thing over again. It's not guaranteed, it doesn't always work. Sometimes you're wrong and it just keeps going. But in the end, I'm still taking profits. I haven't lost anything. I've just lost some unrealized gains. That's all it is and I can live with that. I'm never gonna get it right all the time. And again, I've got some projects that are you know 30% down in profit uh, since I got in. That's just the way it goes. I thought it was gonna go up and it didn't. All right, Ren, much the same as Chainlink. All right, now it hasn't you know, had that big uptrend that it's had, but it has had some sort of parabolic moves where it's really sort of outperformed Bitcoin, because again, this is against Bitcoin, and it's come back and tested this line, and look at that parabolic move. Then it fell all the way down, nearly touched this line again, and what do we have? Another parabolic move. And then it's come back down and touched this line again, and now it is just ranging. This to me feels like a bit of an accumulation zone, before this either rolls over, which is absolutely possible. It could absolutely roll over and come back and test some old support, maybe sort of down here. Definitely a possibility. Or this has a God Almighty rally like it's done before and pumps up to something similar like this, but probably higher. And again, then we'll just have to find the next low. Cycle high to cycle low. And let's see what was the percentage. There we go, it had basically a 70% retracement. So again, 65 to 85% retracement for an altcoin. Uh, pretty stock standard as a good retracement. They have smaller ones. But again, you round it off, let's say roughly 75. This was less, but again, boom. Almost bounced off that line perfectly. Not quite. And then it had a parabolic move again. So if you were trading and you can see these patterns, you can get in uh, and trade it. So again, I am just looking to see uh, if this position in Ren is now going to explode and go to the upside and hopefully higher than this one. Time will tell. All right, last but not least, Aave. And again, I was right with Aave. So I've had some pretty good picks uh, lately. Again, not all of them. I've picked some bad ones, but I've had some pretty good ones. We saw Aave. It was in this downtrend and then it broke out here. So we had the breakout. We just needed to see if it would confirm. So it did. It got up to some old uh, sort of support resistance, retested it, went higher, sweet, fell down below. We're all panicking. Oh my God, this is a fake out. No, it's broke out higher again. Same thing. Uh, it's come down and retested it a bit. It's gone a little bit lower, but then we had these candles. These were on the smaller time frames, and I could see it was wedging. And here we go, it's broken to the upside. Now I'm just waiting to see if there's gonna be any big moves from Aave, or is it just gonna kinda of travel sideways for a while uh, and just bounce around off this support line? Or again, possibly break down. I think it'll probably bounce around on this support line for a while, and I think altcoins are all getting ready to make their next move. They've all found their bottom, uh, and now it's, you know, again, the next move to the upside. Time will tell. All right, hit that like button down below, helps my videos get out there. Hit that subscribe button. I do daily content, and again, sometimes it's a bit of chart analysis, other times it's about stories out there, and sometimes it'll be deep dives uh, into projects that I like. I haven't done too many deep dives for a while. I've been more sort of following the markets, but look, you know, if there's something out there you'd like me to have a look at and do a review on, please leave it in the comments down below. Uh, I'll, get a, I'll have a look at it. Uh, and I'll provide some insight, and maybe do a video, depending. Uh, no guarantees, you know, there's things that I like to report on, uh, but I'm happy to, you know, help out any of my viewers. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another. We should all be on that game train at the moment, and I'll see you next time.